question I got asked all the time over the past couple of years was, James, why don't I just invest and put all of my money into something like Peloton, GameStop, AMC, Zoom, or one of those companies? And this is the point where I just sigh and cry in the corner <laughs> because clearly I haven't done enough to get it into their brains yet that all you need is a cheap, passive global index fund. That's it. They think it looks easy, right? You go all in on some meme stock, you become a millionaire overnight, drink champagne until the end of your time watching the sunset and job done. However, what you see on Instagram and all these places is only the tiniest, tiniest fraction of the story. You don't see the countless amounts of people who tried this and failed what are they going to show off about on Instagram? It didn't work for them. And so in this video, I'm going to cover exactly why you shouldn't just be YOLOing into one company or even a small handful of these sorts of meme stock companies. So let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? I'm going to go through some really popular stocks from the past couple of years, and we're going to see how they performed. So to avoid any confusion, all the 2020 data you're gonna see is up until the 17th of April, which is just a few days ago from when I'm recording this. So let's kick off with a stock that was absolutely on fire during COVID lockdowns, and that was Peloton. In 2020, Peloton rose an astonishing 434%. Maybe you thought, I'm getting in on this. Well, that wouldn't have gone well for you because in 2021, it fell 76%, and in 2022, it's actually fallen a further 33%. Let's assume you are the worst investor, or maybe just the unluckiest investor in the world, and you had the worst possible timing when it comes to buying Peloton stock. You bought at its peak at $167.42 in the second week of January, and it's now worth $23.87. That's a decline of 86%. But maybe Peloton didn't interest you. Maybe you thought AMC, the big cinema chain, was going to be your ticket to the millionaire lifestyle. Now, this went to the absolute moon in 2021. But prior to that, it actually fell 71% in 2020 before putting in its astonishing performance of over 1,100% in 2021. But as you can see, in 2022, it's not looking too hot at the moment as it's dropped 34%. Again, assuming you're the worst investor in the world, you would have bought AMC stock on the 2nd of June 2021 for around $62.55, and it's now worth just $18. And so you would be down 71%. Another immensely popular stock during COVID was, of course, Zoom, with everybody forced to go online with their virtual meetings, virtual quiz nights, and drinks with their friends. Now, during 2020, Zoom actually rocketed up almost 400%. Maybe you got early in on that one and reaped some of the gains, but how's it done since? Well, not great. In 2021, it was down 45%, and so far in 2022, it's down a further 40%. So, how's our worst investor doing then when it comes to Zoom? Well, Zoom hit a high of $568.34 in October 2020, and at the current price of just over $110, you would be down 81%. Next up, let's pick on Spotify, everybody's favorite music streaming service. That was up 110% in 2020. You maybe thought you were the best stock picker in the business, but then 2021 came around and it dropped 26% throughout that year. And so far in 2022, it's actually dropped another 42%. It's actually now cheaper than it was at the end of 2019. Our worst investor stock friend would have bought Spotify on the 19th of February for over $364, and given the current price of over $136, that's a fall of 63%. And finally, Pinterest. Everybody was doing up their houses and their gardens if they were lucky to have them during lockdown and needed their inspiration from somewhere. So in came Pinterest. In 2020, Pinterest was actually up over 250%. And then once again, 2021 knocked it down. It fell 45% last year. And this year, it's also down another 39%. Buying at the peak in February last year would have seen you buy in at $89.15, and with the current price down at $22.16, you'd be seeing a big fat red minus 75% on your account performance. Now, the alternative. I'm gonna do the same as before, but this time I'm gonna look at two of the most popular index funds in the world. One which is available in the UK, and one which is for my friends over the pond in America. So first up, we have the Vanguard FTSE All World. 
This is the 11th largest ETF in the UK, according to the website Just ETF. And in 2020, you could have made a lovely 10% return. And in 2021, that actually got even better because it rose another 18% in that year. Now in 2022, like most markets around the world, it has had a bit of a harder time to maintain those gains and has fallen, but just 5%. Now, if we bring our friend, the worst investor back on the scene, they would have bought on the 9th of December last year, 2021, for 93 pounds and one pence. With the current price at just over 87 pounds, they would only be down 6%. Nothing like the 70, 80% our poor investor would be experiencing had he invested in some of the previous companies we spoke about. Now, my second index fund example is also from Vanguard, and that is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, or VU, V-O-O for short. It's the fourth largest ETF in America, according to ETF database. Now, VU is actually slightly different to the previous ETF I showed, as it's designed only to track the S&P 500, which is an index of some of the 500 largest American companies. So you're not getting that kind of global all world aspect as much, but it had an even better 2020, posting returns of 16%. And it didn't stop there, because in 2021, the price increased 27%. Once again, it's had a harder time, unfortunately, in 2020, falling 8% so far. But despite the recent fall, our worst investor would still be much better off than the previous examples. He would have bought this on the 3rd of January this year for a price of $439.25 and the current price of $402.52 would mean he's experienced just an 8% drop. What the hell does this all mean for you? Well, I hope the point is clear. Don't chase returns. Don't chase the stock of the moment because everybody else is. You don't need to. Now, obviously the numbers I've gone through in this video are not reflective of everything, but the point is that investing into those two index funds is easy. It doesn't require any thinking, much effort. You don't have to look at complex graphs, read and keep up to date with the stock market and news, having the stress of checking your account every day and seeing crazy fluctuations in the value and all the anxiety that that brings. If you just invest into an index fund, you can set it up once, it might only take 10 minutes, set up a direct debit, forget about it. Don't look at it every day and start changing things. Leave it alone, leave it to work for you. Now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, tap the notification bell, and remember, invest smarter, not harder, and I will see you all in the next video.